Hi, and welcome to Mustang Movies with Matt and Christy, and welcome as well to our new home at SMU Daily Mustang. I am Matt Carter, of course. This season on Mustang Movies, we will be scouring all of the latest movies in Hollywood and telling them if they are worth your time. This week, for example, we're reviewing Born After Reading, Bangkok Dangerous, and The Women. And today, we are lucky enough to have a very, very special guest here from Daily Campus, Samantha Urban. Sam, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me on. I'm really excited. Oh yeah, we love having another person to bicker with. That's <laughs> more or less our philosophy here. But I understand you're going to give us a little bit about Burn After Reading today, so yeah, take it I, away. I saw Burn After Reading this week, which is the new film from the Coen Brothers. And Burn After Reading is one of those rare films where it's almost impossible to describe the plot in one sentence. We don't really know what anyone is after. Report back to me when, uh, I don't know, when it makes sense. Um, the best I can give you is that the Coen brothers present a satire about intelligence gathering and information trading in the U.S., complete with some jabs at internet dating and exercise facilities. Hello? Did anybody lose their secret CIA stuff? I don't think so. The film mainly focuses on a former CIA analyst played by John Malkovich and his frigid wife played by Tilda Swinton. You're so cool who's having an affair with a neurotic state marshal played by George Clooney. Add in two bumbling personal trainers played by Francis McDormand and Brad Pitt, and you've got comedy gold. I thought this movie was really funny and clever. The audience I saw it with was laughing hysterically for most of the movie. And of course, since it's a Coen Brothers product, it's extremely well made. Although, I'll admit that the film has some pacing issues. Sometimes it moves really slow, and other times I felt like it moved at like a breakneck speed. Um, overall, I didn't feel like it lived up to Fargo. That's fantastic. Or Big Lebowski in terms of classic Cohen comedies. <laughs> but it could gain that status over a few years, just like those movies did. Yeah, and that's something I would generally agree with as well, is that I love Fargo, I love The Big Lebowski, I love pretty much every Coen Brothers comedy with the exception of Intolerable Cruelty, I'm just tolerating that one, no pun intended. But really overall, I found this film to be very enjoyable, absolutely hysterical. I think Brad Pitt pretty much steals almost every scene he's in. Child's play for Eddie. Uh -huh. And I got his number. I got his number. Oh my god. That was As Chad, this bumbling gym employee, he, d he really commits to this part, and I'm sure it had to be humbling for him to go out there and just play this complete idiot after what he did in Ocean's films and some of his more intelligent movies. But the performances are great. George Clooney is better than he generally is with any other director. And I absolutely think this is a must see for fans of the Coen brothers. It's almost up there with Oh Brother, Where Art Thou in terms of my favorite comedy or comedic sort of movies because Oh Brother Where Art Thou is kind of a comedy drama, but I still highly recommend this to anyone who loves the director or any of the cast. I mean, what do you think, Christy? I guess I'm the odd person out. <laughs> um, I, I agree with a lot with what you two said, um, but <clears throat> the, uh, the pacing problems really got to me. Um, and, I, and I, by the end of it, like I was really into, into the movie. I thought it was really funny and clever. And then, and then by the end of it, I just didn't care about any of the characters anymore. And, I, and it was all a big bunch of nothing, which is, I suppose is the point. And that's a pretty funny uh, premise in itself. But, but I, by the end of it, I was just so tired. It, it, there's just no, there's no substance, I didn't think. And I felt, I felt like it being about nothing was kind of what the Coen brothers were trying to say about bureaucracy in Washington, that it's, it's just a lot of nothing, a lot of getting nowhere. Well, yeah, we have this CIA chief in this movie who just repeatedly asks them, what are they doing? Is it important? Okay, just let them do whatever they want. <laughs> it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. And, there's... and it's J.K. Simmons. Oh, he's yeah, always yeah. great in everything he does. Oh, yeah, so. and he's absolutely hysterical in this role. I mean, he along with Brad Pitt are two of the best performances I see in it. And I mean, I'm not going to get into specifics about the ending, but one of the things I really enjoy about Coen Brothers movies is you never really expect the ending to come where it does. You hear a line, and then the credits roll, and you're like, what? But the more you sit on it, the better I think it is. And I don't necessarily want to have an ending where everything is tied up all neat and pretty. I want to keep myself guessing. But I really didn't have as much of a problem with the pacing. But overall, I think, still think this is a very enjoyable film. I mean, Chris, do you have anything you want to finish up with? Nope. 
Nope, not, not at all. Really. All right. Well, thanks, Samantha, for presenting that to us and giving us a different perspective that's not me rambling so much. <laughs> it is always really Yet, nice. Yeah, you still manage to ramble anyway. I do. Odd. It's, it's, it's a talent of mine. <laughs> but I guess when we come back, we will have a review for you of Bangkok Dangerous with Nicolas Cage.